Welcome calculus students to our test prep walkthrough for 6.3 optimization. So here we go with this first one. This is just a limit problem. So if we plug in the zero, you'll end up with, and, you, and a zero into the x there, you'll end up with a zero over zero. So when we get that situation, that's where we can use L'Hopital's rule, which is really nice because then we will just take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So on top, we're going to get f prime of x minus zero all over and then on bottom we get 2x. Well what's the derivative of f of x? That's going to be 6x. Okay and then the derivative of uh, oh yeah so that's the numerator and then on the bottom we have a 2x. Simplify that and we get 3. Pretty quick and easy problem there if you recognize L'Hopital's is possible for that one. Number two, I'm going to set this one up for you, but I won't do all the number crunching. The calculator uh, on this one, let me show you how I would use it for the here. So we have a gun is fired vertically upward, position of 100, initial velocity of 400, uh, and then the gravity, of course, is negative 32 feet per second. So let's plug that stuff in. So negative 32 is the gravity. So it's going to end up as negative 16 t squared. Sorry, my pin's having a problem here. It's going to and then initial velocity is uh, 400 feet per second. So 400 feet per second. And then my initial height was 100. Okay, so I take the derivative and I get negative 32t plus 400. Now, why am I taking the derivative? I'm taking the derivative because I'm looking for the maximum. A maximum is going to happen on this thing. It's a parabola, and the maximum is going to happen when I have a horizontal asymptote. So you could just graph this original function here, h of t, right there. You could graph this thing and then look for the maximum point. But we're trying to practice some calculus here, and it's actually faster if we just use the calculus. Derivative equals 0, and then we solve for this. We'll end up with t equals, using a calculator it can help you on this part, just do the number crunching, 12.5 seconds. So all you have to do is plug in the 12.5 into the original function there, plug it into the t, and you'll end up with the correct answer. For this one, we're just taking the derivative. Now, do not get confused with L'Hopital's. We don't just do the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. That's only if we were taking a limit as x approaches something, and then we ended up with an answer of 0 over 0. That, or infinity over infinity, in the indeterminate form. That's when we use L'Hopital's. Okay, so don't get confused with that, that on this one, we actually have to use the quotient rule. So we're going to take the derivative of the first, which is is e raised to the 3x times 3 uh, for the uh, chain rule. And then we multiply it by the one on bottom left alone. Sorry, my, again, my pin is really having hard times right now doing this accurately. And then we subtract. Now we do it the other way. We leave this one alone. So it's going to be e raised to the 3x. And then we multiply it by the derivative of the bottom which in this case is just going to be 3, and then that's all over the bottom squared, which would be a 9x squared. Okay, so this is the answer. We could try and clean this up a little bit, and then hopefully you'll, you'll see that it doesn't actually match one of these. So what I'm going to show you a trick to doing this is always try and recognize what you could factor out. So I have here, here's my first term, here's my second term. What do both of these have that I could factor out? I'm going to do this down here. They both have a 3, and they both have an e to the 3x. So if I factor out a 3e to the 3x, then I multiply by what's going to be left. That's gone because I just factored it out. I'm left with a 3x minus, and then what's over here? Just the number 1 because I divided it out. And then that's all over 9x x squared. Now you can see from that, now you have an opportunity to simplify the 3 over 9, and then you can see how it matches up perfectly right there with that one. Number 4, we're matching the graph of f, so this is f, and all of these down here are f prime, so we're trying to figure out which derivative graph matches with our original function f. Uh, so notice right here, this has a slope of almost 0. Right here we have a slope of just about zero. It's just starting to flatten out. And then right there we have a slope of almost zero. Uh, and then here it's positive, And here it is negative slope. So with my red pin, I'm going to mark my zero there. I would have just about a zero here. And then it looks like just about a zero right there. 
So in between here and here is positive. In between here is negative. So it's going to go up, turn around, down, and come back. So we can tell this is positive part, this is the negative part, and that right away should jump out at you. Look, that's the only possible one that matches. So again, you're taking the slope of f and figuring out how that matches with the y values of the derivative, and this is the only one that works. Last problem, we're going to come up with the equation of a tangent line. So just as a reminder, we need y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, which they gave to us, which is pi over 6. So what we need, let's first figure out what this y1 is. Uh, the y1 is just going to be y equals cosine of 3 pi over 6. Well, 3 pi over 6 is just pi over 2. So cosine of pi over 2, if we're using a unit circle, pi over 2 is right on top. The cosine is 0. All right, so that means this right here, this is a 0. And now we need this, the m. m comes from the derivative. So now we'll take y prime because that's what my slope is going to be. My slope is y prime. And what is that? Cosine of 3x. So that becomes negative sine of 3x and then times it by the derivative of the inside, which is 3. Uh, now we can plug in the pi over 6. So we get a, I'm going to bring this 3 to the front, negative 3 sine of 3 pi over 6. Okay, so sine of 3 pi over 6, that's pi over 2 right there. Simplifies to pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2, so again right here, the y value at the top of the unit circle, sine of pi over 2, that whole thing is just the number 1. And then we still have that negative 3 in front, so that equals negative 3. So that's your m, your slope is negative 3. So then you just plug the 0 is the y1, so there, simplifies out, boom, we got our answer. All right, hopefully that was helpful to you. Good luck on your master check when you're finished up with all this packet.